peek into the world of auditing, specifically, the audit of fixed assets and related accounts. Auditing, in its simplest form, is a systematic examination of data, statements, records, operations and performances of an organization. It's a third-party perspective that ensures accountability and transparency in financial reporting. Now let's delve a bit deeper. The Investing Cycle Audit focuses on investment transactions and events, particularly scrutinizing fixed assets such as property, plant and equipment also known as PPE and investment property. These assets are integral to an organization's operations and represent significant capital investments. Therefore, their audit is crucial to ensure that these assets are acquired, recorded, and maintained appropriately. It's a fascinating journey that uncovers the complexities of financial systems, the intricacies of asset management, and the importance of meticulous record-keeping. So, are you ready to dive deeper into this world of auditing fixed assets and related accounts? Join us on this enlightening journey at EY Online. Welcome to EY Online, your comprehensive guide to all things audit and finance. EY Online is your trusted ally in the world of finance, dedicated to demystifying complex auditing concepts. Our mission is to provide accessible and easy to understand information, breaking down the jargon and helping you navigate the intricate landscape of auditing. Whether you're a seasoned auditor or a newbie stepping into the finance world, EY Online is here for you. Join us as we delve into the audit of fixed assets and related accounts. Before we can understand the audit of fixed assets, we need to understand what fixed assets are. Fixed assets, also known as property, plant, and equipment, are long-term tangible assets that a company owns and uses in its operations to generate income. These assets include things like buildings, machinery, vehicles, and even land. They're not something you typically convert into cash within a year. Instead, they're used over an extended period, providing value to the business for years. But why are they so important? that we need to audit them. Well, fixed assets often make up a significant portion of a company's total assets. Therefore, any inaccuracy in the valuation or reporting of these assets can lead to substantial misstatements in a company's financial reports. This could mislead investors, creditors, and other stakeholders who rely on these financial statements to make informed decisions. Now, let's talk about the audit of fixed assets. An audit of fixed assets is a process where auditors examine the company's records related to its fixed assets. They check and verify the accuracy and completeness of these records. This involves examining documents like purchase invoices, depreciation schedules, and disposal records to confirm the existence, ownership, value, and economic life of these assets. Importantly, the audit of fixed assets also includes an assessment of the company's internal controls over the acquisition, use, and disposal of these assets. This is to ensure that the company has effective systems in place to prevent or detect errors or fraud that could affect the value of its fixed assets. In essence, the audit of fixed assets helps ensure the integrity and reliability of a company's financial statements, fostering trust and confidence among its stakeholders. Now that we have a grasp of fixed assets, let's move on to their auditing. The auditing process for fixed assets involves a series of steps. Let's delve into the intricate world of auditing fixed assets. Picture an auditor's journey much like a detective's pursuit of truth. This journey takes them through a series of steps, each as crucial as the last, to ensure the financial statements are accurate. The first step is understanding the client's business and industry. What is the nature of their operations? What kind of fixed assets do they have? The auditor needs to be familiar with the client's business to understand the types of fixed assets they might encounter. This is like the detective understanding the background of their case. Next, the auditor reviews the client's fixed assets policies. Every organization has its own unique set of rules and procedures when it comes to managing fixed assets. This could range from how they acquire assets, to their depreciation methods, or even their disposal procedures. The auditor examines these policies to ensure they comply with relevant accounting standards. Following this, the auditor performs risk assessment procedures. They identify areas where the client might be susceptible to material misstatements in their fixed assets. Potential risks could include incorrect capitalization of expenses or over or under depreciation. This step is akin to a detective identifying potential suspects. Subsequently, the auditor performs tests of controls. They assess whether the client's internal controls over fixed assets are effective. For instance, does the client have proper authorization procedures for asset purchases? Are there checks and balances in place to prevent fraud? 
Once the tests of controls are complete, the auditor can move on to substantive procedures. This is where the rubber meets the road. The auditor verifies the existence and valuation of the fixed assets. They might physically inspect the assets or examine invoices and other supporting documents. They also confirm whether the depreciation has been calculated correctly. This is like the detective finding concrete evidence to support their case. Finally, the auditor evaluates the evidence gathered and forms an opinion. They determine whether the fixed assets are accurately presented in the financial statements. If there are any material misstatements, the auditor discusses these with the client and suggests adjustments. In all of this, an auditor also considers materiality. This means they focus on items that could significantly impact the financial statements. For example, a small error in the valuation of a major piece of machinery could have a greater impact than a similar error in a minor piece of office equipment. And there you have it. The process may seem complicated, but with practice it becomes a routine part of auditing. It's all about understanding the client's business, assessing risk, testing controls, verifying existence and valuation, and forming an opinion. A systematic, methodical approach is the key to a successful audit of fixed assets. The process may seem complicated but with practice it becomes a routine part of auditing. Fixed assets aren't the only things auditors need to check. Related accounts like property, plant and equipment and investment property also need auditing. Diving into the realm of related accounts, we find ourselves handling property, plant and equipment, often abbreviated as PPE. This category is a major part of an organization's balance sheet and it's fundamental for auditors to verify the accuracy of these assets. They can range from buildings and machinery to furniture and IT equipment all of which are tangible assets that are used in the production or supply of goods and services. But how does an auditor go about this? Well, first they examine the ledger accounts, check for a correct classification of assets, and analyze the depreciation methods applied. It's essential to ensure that these assets are recorded at cost and depreciated over their useful life. In addition, auditors also look at the physical verification of these assets. This could involve visiting the site where these assets are located and cross-verify them with the ledger. A discrepancy here could indicate potential issues that need to be addressed. Now, let's talk about investment property. This is a category of property that a company holds to earn rental income or for capital appreciation rather than for use in the business. The auditing process here involves checking the valuation of these properties and ensuring that they adhere to the relevant accounting standards. For instance, if a company owns a building and leases it out, auditors would need to confirm that the company is reporting the rental income correctly and that the building's value on the balance sheet is accurate. These properties are usually valued at fair value, so auditors might need to involve experts to assess the current market value. In essence, auditing related accounts is a meticulous process that requires a keen eye for detail. It's not just about ticking boxes. It's about ensuring that the financial statements present a true and fair view of the company's financial position. Auditing related accounts is just as crucial as auditing fixed assets. And remember, in the world of auditing, every asset counts. Auditing fixed assets and related accounts is a key part of the investing cycle. It's a crucial process that we've been discussing throughout this video, and it's the cornerstone of a successful investing cycle. Let's take a quick jog down memory lane. We started with defining what auditing fixed assets is all about. It's the process of examining the records and reports related to a company's tangible assets, making sure that everything is in order and nothing is amiss. It's about ensuring accuracy, integrity, and reliability in financial reporting. Next, we delved into the process of auditing fixed assets. We looked at how auditors examine the purchase of assets, scrutinize the maintenance records, and verify the depreciation calculations. This is done to ensure that the assets are not only reported accurately, but are also being used efficiently and effectively. Then we explored the audit of related accounts. We talked about how auditors review the accounts associated with fixed assets like property, plant and equipment, and investment property. This step is crucial to get a comprehensive understanding of a company's financial position and to ensure the fair presentation of these assets in the financial statements. And now, we've reached the end of our journey. But the learning doesn't have to stop here. If you found this video helpful, share your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to EY Online for more insights into auditing and finance.